Welcome to this ANSYS How-To Series video for ANSYS Grant EduPack. In this video, we'll be covering the enhanced EcoAudit tool within the software and highlighting the additional capabilities found within this tool. The enhanced version of our EcoAudit provides a more detailed analysis of the environmental impact of a product by including extended eco property data, increased material processing and end-of-life considerations, and an estimate of product cost at various stages throughout its life. Please note that the Enhanced Eco Audit Tool is an advanced function within Grant EduPack and can be only found in the advanced Level 3 subject databases shown here. This tool is not found in the introductory version of Grant EduPack, which does not contain these databases. Please choose your database carefully, depending on the amount of information and detail needed for your particular project or assignment. This video will build off of our basic EcoAudit tutorial, which also can be found on our channel. Let's use the Level 3 Sustainability Database to demonstrate the increased functionality of this tool. We can see the Enhanced EcoAudit tool in the main toolbar. We know we are accessing the enhanced version because of the plus sign found on the leaf icon. Clicking this icon opens our Eco Audit project. As with the basic Eco Audit, we will use an example to showcase the additional capabilities. To do this, we will open an existing Eco Audit project file for a portable space heater by clicking Open and selecting the project file. Note, Eco Audit project files are different than regular project files and can only be opened through the Eco Audit tool. We can now include additional information in the product information section of our Eco Audit. The first is we can select to include a cost analysis, which we will do here. Second, we can select the country of manufacture, which for our example is South Korea. And we can specify the dimensions of the package in meters. Next, we will move to the material, manufacture, and end of life section where we enter the bill of materials for our product. There are now two subsections here, one focused on components and one focused on the joining and finishing techniques used during manufacture of the product. First, let's look at the component section. Similar to our basic eco audit, we can enter information about the quantity, component name, material the component's made out of, the recycled material content of our component, the mass, the primary process used to form this material, and how it's dealt with at the end of its life. There are five new columns in this subsection. We can specify the length, if applicable, of our material after the primary process, as well as selecting a secondary process, and the percentage of material removed using this secondary process. We can also select the percentage of material recovered during the end of life of our product. Remember, for additional information about the mathematical models and other details for any section of the enhanced or basic eco audit, please click the question mark icon next to the section name. The addition of joining and finishing data within the enhanced eco audit allows us to consider other elements that are both important to the overall product quality as well as the environmental impact. For our space heater example, we can see painting, welding, and assembly via fasteners were selected. Now we can move to our transport section of our enhanced eco audit. This is similar to our basic eco audit, considering the route our product takes to reach the point of sale. Multiple stages can be used, as shown here in our example. Finally, we can explore the product use. We can see that the product life, country of use, and energy rating can be set, like in our basic eco audit. For this portable space heater example, it's being kept on a truck. While the space heater is not used while the truck is in motion, the space heater is moved from location to location between uses. Therefore, both the static mode to account for normal space heater use and mobile mode to account for transport between uses must be considered during the lifetime of the product. 
Details on how to select this information can be found in our basic eco audit tutorial. Let's examine the increased amount of information found in our enhanced eco audit report. Clicking the summary chart pops up the bar charts for our material, manufacture, transport, use, disposable, and end of life potential for our product. Clicking on a bar opens the help menu, giving us some strategies for reducing environmental impact. The end of life potential helps us determine if all materials were used as effectively as possible in the next life, primarily in terms of recycled content. We can now display this bar chart in three ways, energy, CO2, and cost. Clicking the detailed report button will open the report in a new tab within the software. We can find our summary bar chart with energy, CO2 footprint, and cost on the first page, as well as a table of the numerical values. Using the arrows at the top of the tab, we can look into details at the charts and numerical values for energy, CO2, and cost. Remember, the report will automatically update if any changes are made to the product definition. In this how-to tutorial, we've covered the Enhanced Eco Audit tool within Granta EduPack and showcased the additional information we can uncover about the environmental impact of a product's life cycle. More details about Granta EduPack can be found in the description below. Be sure to check out our channel for more ANSYS learning videos, and thank you for watching.